Right, all you glorious gamers out there, welcome to the Players 2 podcast, the video game podcast for gamers like you, by gamers like you. You can find Players 2 on all the social media, that is Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, the lot. You can also find our written content over at players2.com, that's P-L-A-Y-E-R-S-T-O-O.com. And if you could take five seconds to give us five stars over on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts, that really, really, really helps us out. There's a huge amount for the exposure of the show. And while you're over there, if you could leave us a little review as well, again, that just helps us out even more. And thank you, thank you so much to anyone that's already done that for us. You're an absolute legend to us. All right, and on with the show. My name is Mark Henderson. With me, as always, Mr. Lewis Camley. How's it going, Lewis? It's going very well, Mark. Good to see you again. It's been a wee while. (laughs) It has been a wee while, ladies and gentlemen. I can only apologise that we missed a couple of weeks there. That was entirely my work's fault, is what I will say. (laughs) (laughs) No, seriously, again, two-man operation here. If something goes wrong for one of us, it goes wrong for the entire podcast. My apologies. I've been a little bit all over the place this year and something I plan to rectify for next year, Lewis, but apologies all round. But we need to get stuck into the podcast here. We've got a thousand things to get to on our Game Awards special here, Lewis. But firstly, what have you been playing over the past three weeks? (laughs) Well, Mark, yeah, since since we last spoke, um, I have just been completing uh, God of War Ragnarok, as I believe you have as well. Yes, we both have now completed God of War and... What a lovely game it is, Lewis, to play. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed myself, I really did. <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty fantastic from start to finish. I thought it never really put a foot wrong for me uh, as it unfolded. The, all the new additions, all the ways it kind of built on the 2018 reboot felt sort of natural and not excessive, but really, you know, fun generally. Um, and the way that the story evolved into just this big kind of epic battle by the end, you know, it, it did feel quite different from the first game, or the last game, I should say, uh, in that sense. The, you know that it wasn't just a story of Kratos and his family it was a sort of became a much bigger rebellion I suppose altogether all um, and that yeah just it just made that kind of epic conclusion feel really fantastic I thought yeah I mean I would agree with that 100% again I don't think that it quite hit the highs of 2018 I think that it's a near impossible task to ask it to do that though if I'm being completely honest with you have to say i thought that the ending felt a little bit rushed compared to the end of the game it felt as if everything just sort of ramped up and happened very very quickly it was awesome yeah, all the things yeah. that happened were fucking cool but it just felt as though it all sort of climaxed very very quickly and then but I, that's that's not really a complaint to be totally honest but throughout gameplay fantastic level design fantastic thoroughly enjoyed the narrative really excellent video game <laughs> i don't really know what else to say if you have a playstation you should really go out and make this a priority purchase for yourself it is extremely good it is hard to imagine anyone not deriving some enjoyment from god of war to be completely honest it is it's so fucking good man it really was great really enjoyed playing it i am sort of gutted that i never got to go back and play 2018 oh really yeah. first to like i never had that time just because i wanted to be reminded of uh i don't know just how good that was because it just felt like such a smooth continuation from then as you said like like nothing was forced everything felt like a very natural progression to the first game and it just felt as though you picked up exactly where you left off and there was no video gamey reason why you didn't have any of your powers or you didn't have your chaos blades or whatever and blah 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 blah. yeah there's still skill trees and all that business but like mostly everything was just there because it should have been there narratively and the narrative was just never compromised for any video gamey reason and i just love that i just think that's great and similarly with the first one like they never forgot about all his sparta stuff and all that it was just like right that's in the past now but that has obviously shaped this character but we're in a new world we'll make reference to that and we've not forgot that that happened but we're just continuing we're just starting this new thing and then this just picked up exactly from where that left off it's just great man i've never known a video game to do what god of war's done with these past two games just completely reinvent itself in such a different and brilliant way you know it, it really deserves all the accolades it gets to be honest yeah it's absolutely truly fantastic video game i think that you know that you, like you say the way it carries its threads forward is, is so important i mean that there'll be a lot of talk about what comes next for this franchise and i think that's really exciting but just to, to focus on this duology it has been just fantastically conceived and delivered um from start to finish the way that the, the you know the, the characters that you care about by the end of this game you know a lot of those relationships have been set up over the years now you know since the 2018 game 
and, and to see them get their own journeys and the fantastic kind of performances behind those it's just yeah it's it satisfies on so many levels and and you know most primarily on the kind of combat and action uh, it just it's just fantastic and, and great fun to play a true like a really truly enjoyable game um, and, and like you say anyone who is interested in sony exclusives like it is the sony exclusive you know it's the, it is, it <laughs> nails all of the parts that the other games do as well so um yeah, yeah this a, is the sony play. exclusive all other sony exclusives <laughs> aspire to be just about well like. yeah just about that's a debate we need to have at some point you know is this a better sequel than the last of us part two um, oh. we'll leave that on a hang maybe <laughs> <laughs> that is a conversation we have to have a different day list because we have got a thousand things to get to and with that list let's get stuck into the game award winners all right list the game award winners now every year me and lewis have a little bet trying to predict who wins each award in each category and the winner gets to make the loser play a game that they haven't played yet not as a punishment but just as a sort of we we think to get you along in the year list we <laughs> extra bit of baggage oh. to put on you when you're trying to play all the other good games that have already come out <laughs> and Lewis has done dreadfully at this in the past. So this year, we gave Lewis a wee leg up. We let him choose first in all the categories. And if there was a 50-50, which usually came down between Elden Ring and God of War, whichever one Lewis chose, I chose the other one. Let's see how that panned out. <laughs> Lewis, let's get things kicked off with the big one, the daddy. Game of the year. So the nominees for this were Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Stray, Horizon Forbidden West, God of War Ragnarok, A Plague Tale Requiem, and the winner, Elden Ring. Absolutely, which Lewis guessed, and of course I had to go with the other 50-50, which was God of War. Full disclosure, I would have chose God of War anyway. So a point well earned for Lewis. Look, I genuinely would have chose God of War. God of War is my game of the year, but oh. I don't resent this at all. Elden Ring was an exceptional game. It, it would really was doing things with an open world that hadn't been done before. I thought it got a bit long in the tooth quite a lot <laughs> before it finished, if I'm totally honest, but... I, I don't resent this call. Elden Ring is an exceptional game and it fully deserves to win this as far as I'm concerned. It was between those two and either one would have been fine with me. Yeah, it was definitely between those two. I, I picked Elden Ring because I thought that sense of revolution that it brought it was something that we had not really seen before achieved on that scale um, whereas God of War as, as brilliant as it has felt as we were just saying actually like an evolution on that first game so really happy with that when I, I thought that I thought that that would scoop it but I did think that Elden Ring might perform poorly otherwise so uh, let's keep going yeah let's keep going with game direction list nominees were Stray Immortality Horizon Forbidden West God of War Ragnarok and the winner was Elden Ring Again, lovely to see Immortality in there by Sam Barlow. Really interesting game. Really want to play that game, to be honest with you. One of the ones I definitely missed out on this year. I chose Elden Ring. You chose God of War. Again, you chose God of War first. So were you a little bit surprised at this went into Elden Ring? Yeah, to, to an extent. I mean, because, as you just said, it's, it was a bit long in the tooth by the end. It felt a bit baggy to me and God of War felt really tightly directed everything is kind of like you were just saying that you know the narrative pushes the character development along pushes the skill trees along and so on and so forth so but you know as soon as I saw that Miyazaki was in the audience I kind of knew what was coming <laughs> <laughs> I mean to be honest with you I was taking it from the sort of direction that there is no there's no waypoints on the map, but there's nothing like that. And yet the game, by its very design, directs you, shows you where to go. And I think that, I, I don't know if you call that game direction as such, a, sort of where I'm pulling from, but just the mere fact that the game shows you where to go without telling you where to go is just fantastic. And I love that about a lot of uh, FromSoft's games, but I think it was just really very well executed in an open world, I, I would say. But yeah, I mean, again, between the two of them, if it went to either one, you couldn't really argue with it, could you? <laughs> no, no, exactly. <laughs> After that was narrativeless. Nominees were Immortality, Horizon Forbidden West, Elden Ring, A Plague Tale Requiem, and the winner, which was God of War Ragnarok. Yeah, again, you chose this list on the 50-50. I went for Elden Ring. I probably would have chose God of War had yeah, I had the option. You did say that, to be fair honest. to you, yeah. And I think it thoroughly deserves it now, having played the entire game list. Yeah, exactly. I think yeah. that it thoroughly, thoroughly deserves that. It's almost not a competition with anyone else. I think Elden Ring probably was the next closest, but I mean, that should have went to God of War all day, yeah, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely, yeah. After that list was Art Direction. Nominees were Stray, Scorn, Horizon Forbidden West, God of War Ragnarok, and the winner was Elden Ring. 
Indeed it was. Now, I went for God of War. I, I was left God of War again on the 50-50, but I was happy with God of War in this category. But yeah, Elden Ring takes it, man. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised there, if I'm honest. But I mean, it had fantastic art direction as well. I mean, what are you going to say? I think any category that these two games are in, you really can't argue with them winning it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Again, for me, this was about how different it felt. You know, God of War, we've seen games that look like that. We talked about how it kind of reflects other big Sony games, but I just, that moment of descending down into one of the underworlds in Elden Ring, you know, the kind of uh, lands below down those lifts, can't remember what they're called now, that moment walking out uh, under the kind of purple sky and just thinking like, this oh, is sure. in- incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there were so many moments like that uh, and the monster design and all that as well. So I, I, I thought this was a lock. I think you did say that you might have picked Elden Ring though, but maybe it was a bit of a true 50-50 for you. I think that probably was a bit of a true 50-50 for me, but again, having now played all of God of War, I think I still would have chose God of War, but I mean, I, I don't enough, begrudge yeah, Elden yeah. Ring winning this. It, it thoroughly, thoroughly deserves <laughs> it as well. I, I, you were splitting the hairs here, really. After that, Lewis, was score slash music. Nominees were Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Metal Hellsinger, Elden Ring, A Plague Tale Requiem, and the winner was God of War Ragnarok. Now, this is one we both missed on, Lewis. You went for Elden Ring, and then I had the option to go for God of War this time round and chose Xenoblade, because I just know that the music in those games is very beloved. It's generally very, very good as well. The winner at God of War, can't really blame it. Thought the music in that was fucking awesome, to be honest. But uh, yeah, feels like a point dropped, that one for me. (laughs) Yeah, it is in that sense, definitely. But um, there was just, yeah, a lot of good music this year, it seems like, because God of War and Elden Ring could easily have scooped this um, Xenoblade, like you say, well-praised. So I I think it's just that that was a a really well-battled category, you know? Yeah, definitely, man, definitely. And I think quite similarly to the next category, which is audio design. Nominations were Horizon Forbidden West, Gran Turismo 7, Elden Ring, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and the winner was God of War Ragnarok. Now, you went for the old faithful pick the shooter in this category, (laughs) which I think is a a valiant move, Lewis, I have to say. I went for God of War, which was the winner, so that is a point up to Mark. But I think any of them could have taken that home and no one could have really argued about it, you know? (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm going to stop going for the first person shooter. I think in that category, because I think it's lost me several times. <laughs> <laughs> After that, Lewis was best performance. Nominations were Sonny Siliuk in God of War Ragnarok, Charlotte McBurney in A Plague Tale Requiem, Manon Gage in Immortality, Ashley Birch in Horizon Forbidden West, and the winner was Christopher Judge in God of War Ragnarok. Again, I really don't think you can argue with this. You went for uh, Sonny Siliak, who plays I have Trace. To, I have to confess here, Mark, what happened there, and I even said it on the podcast, is that I thought when we did this that Christopher Judge won the last time for the last God of War game. And, yeah, I think you did say that, yeah. And what actually happened is that he, I think he presented an award that night and he spoke at length then, and I just have a memory of him on stage talking a lot. So I yeah, thought it was when won. he was like, read it boy or whatever to yeah. Sonny Siliak, who was on stage with him. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I thought that they wouldn't he wouldn't win it twice for the same character almost the same performance so i thought oh they'll give it to atreus and at that point i'd only played a bit of the game and atreus character seemed like it was going to get a lot of screen time which it obviously did but um, sure yeah yeah so yeah if i had known that at the time i would have picked christopher judge but i was that it. the year oh, i can't remember the guy's name arthur the, clark yeah yeah exactly, won it for red yeah. dead too oh yeah. to be fair that was a staggeringly yeah. good performance as well i don't think there was much competition here for christopher no, judge no, I think not having finished it astoundingly good as kratos frankly is this acceptance speech was insanely long oh my god but apart from that sound did fantastic performance thoroughly deserved this one as far as i'm concerned after that was best indie game loss nominations for this were tunic sifu neon white cult of the lamb and the winner was stray and we both picked it this felt like a walk in the park all day this felt like the easiest choice in the whole thing as far as i'm concerned was did it deserve it debatable but it was up for game of the year and a lot of those other ones weren't or any none of those other ones were so it felt as if it was going to yeah, be this all day exactly that's all that needs to be said about that it was in the game of the year category so i had no doubt it was going to win this on merit or not basically <laughs> speaking of absolute locks in the indie category <laughs> debut indie <laughs> list <laughs> uh, yeah nominations for this were vampire survivors tunic norco neon white and the winner was stray again same thing right we don't really have to <laughs> our point about this i don't feel 
if you're nominated in the game of the year and you can't win the indie category that would be fairly mental i would say so yeah i mean i thought stray was a very good game i wonder if it was really worth this or if it was just the most popular game there you mm-hmm. know what i mean but i mean don't want to take anything away from it it was a great little game i thoroughly enjoyed playing it it just wasn't a, a staggering indie game do you know what i mean Next up, Lewis, was Action Game. Nominations were Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge, Sifu, Neon White, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and the winner was Bayonetta 3, Mark. This is the one this that is the hurts one, soul a little bit, yeah. Lewis, um, because you chose Neon White, I chose Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which had a huge amount of buzz when it first came out, and people were f- falling over it to give it praise, but Bayonetta ended up winning it. I love the Bayonetta series. Full disclosure, I know we didn't talk about it at the top of the show, but I am now playing Bayonetta 3, having completed God of War. It's great. I really, really like those games. I have no idea why I didn't pick this. This, again, feels like a point drop to me, Lewis. Yeah, you basically flirted with picking it at the time. I think you said it it was your heart's pick, but not your head's, essentially. (laughs) Should have listened to the heartless. (laughs) (laughs) Especially when it comes to Bayonetta. (laughs) Yeah, no. (laughs) All right, Lewis, best action adventure game. Nominations are Tunic, Stray, Horizon Forbidden West, A Plague Tale Requiem, and your winner was God of War Ragnarok. And we both picked the God of War Ragnarok. It felt like there was no other choice here, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Similarly, you're in the game of the year contention, you're up for probably one of the best games ever made. You're going to win this category yeah. all day, It was right? maybe the, the category where you might have thought Horizon would kind of get its flowers, but it was just too hard to deny God of War, really. I, I I think it's fair. I really do. Yeah. After that, Lewis, best RPG. Nominations were Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Triangle Strategy, Pokemon Legends Arceus, Live Alive, and your winner was Elden Ring. And again, everything I just said about God of War in the last category applies to Elden Ring in this category. <laughs> it felt like an absolute lock. We both chose Elden Ring, and frankly, it thoroughly deserves it. After that, Lewis, best fighting game. Nominees were Sifu, The King of Fighters 15, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, All Star Battle R, DNF Duel, and your winner was Multiverses. And Lewis picked Multiverses, and on a 50 50, I ended up going with Sifu. I have to say, had I had the option, I probably would have chosen Multiverses yep. as well, but it was a close enough 50 50 that I felt comfortable picking Sifu. But yeah, point to Lewis there. And honestly, I think it probably deserves it. Yeah, me too. After that, Lewis, best family game, otherwise known as the Nintendo <laughs> category. <laughs> Very much so, yeah. Just stick them all in here. Uh, your nominees were Splatoon 3, Nintendo Switch Sports, Mario Plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope, Lego Star Wars, The Skywalker Saga, and your winner, Mark. Your winner, my winner. Everyone's winner was Kirby in the Forgotten Land. <laughs> now, Lewis, the reason you've went on about that is because you're very, very pleased about this nomination and the win, because I never gave you a hope in hell. Yeah, you that. I thought that was a this. terrible pick. I genuinely thought that was a terrible, terrible pick. I picked Splatoon and obviously did not win, but I thought that was a terrible pick. That is, That was a fantastic call by you. I was completely off the pulse with that. I never thought that I had a hope in hell. Fair play to you, man. Thank you. <laughs> After that was best sports slash racing game. Still no idea why those two things are together. No. <laughs> uh, your nominees were Oli Oli World, NBA 2K23, FIFA 23, F1 22, and your winner was Gran Turismo 7. You picked Gran Turismo 7, Lewis. I went for the NBA game, and frankly, looking back, I've no idea why. <laughs> it, it was it was always going to be Gran Turismo 7, this, in hindsight, but, I mean, I was trying to pick the 50-50s list, so... Yeah, you sort, you, of, <laughs> you sort of talked about picking both of them at the time, but you, you chose NBA at the end, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's what it is, mate. That is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> then... Finally, was best sim slash strategy game. Nominees were Victoria 3, Two Point Campus, Total War Warhammer 3, Dune Spice Wars, and the, your winner was Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. Similarly to the last category, Lewis, you picked the Mario game and won. I picked Warhammer. I don't know why. I don't know why I picked that. It, it was always sure going to be the either. Mario game. It was always going to be the Mario game. That was crazy picks by me. I really don't know why. I thought that that was 50-50 enough not to pick that. <laughs> yeah, I don't don't really get that one either, but yeah, that's the way you went, so... It uh, is indeed. Lewis, you have won successfully, 11 points to 7. However, I do have to say that while I gave you a wee leg up in this one, 
I believe I would have lost this anyway, even if we were picking straight. I think yeah. I would have lost by one point. Your win does not have to have an asterisk next to it. No, it was very, very close. I think if you had gone, if you'd changed your mind slightly on a couple of those last ones where you sort of flirted with the idea of matching me uh, and then didn't, it might have been pretty much a draw. Um, so well played, I think, on both parts this time. I, uh, I agree, I agree. But as I said, well, I, I was doing it in my head and I think I would have still lost by one so i'm sort of fine with this i'm all good so lewis as winner this year what would you like me to play oh it was tough to come up with something i have not actually thought about this for so long (laughs) (laughs) exactly (laughs) um yeah, I flirted with a few things. I did flirt with the idea of giving you Kirby because you slaughtered that pick so much. That would have been spectacular, <laughs> mate. I would have loved that. <laughs> um, a game you yourself have not played. No, exactly, no. And another one that I haven't played but I want to play and I thought maybe I could give you it and we could sort of play it simultaneously um, was Sekiro. But, oh, right, okay. Cool. But I, it might be slightly too long. I imagine, you know, it can be beaten in under 30 hours but probably wouldn't I be. I would not so, be in under 30 yeah. hours, man. <laughs> um... Oh, 30 hours was our sort of time limit on this. Like, we didn't want to be giving each other 90 hour games exactly, or anything like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Well, that's the thing, yeah, because The Witcher 3 might have been one that I would have given you, but again, that is so sure. expansive. Um, you know, but it's definitely something that I think you should play. Maybe it will be soon, Lewis. Oh. I'll peek behind the curtain. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, the new uh, the new upgrades look amazing. Of so. course, of course, of course. And one thing that I guess is, would be hovering on this list for a long time was the Batman series, the Arkham series. Um, oh, yeah, sure. Which okay. I really thought about giving you, but I would only really want to give you one of those games, out of fairness, not to give you three games. And the one I would have given you is the second one, Arkham City, and I, I know that that would bother you because you would want to play them all. Um, yeah, and would, also, yeah. <laughs> a bit like Uncharted, I sort of worry that they won't quite hold up anymore and and, and you know you, you didn't love most of Uncharted so I didn't want to do that to you especially because this was so much of a draw so I'm going to give you a game that I loved and I know that you've wanted to play uh, but just haven't got around to yet um, but I hope that this makes you do it fairly soon and that's going to be Disco Elysium Mark oh wow is that under 30 hours? It clocks in basically on 30 hours so mm, okay <laughs> yeah, so I can nearly guarantee you that I will be playing that for more than 30 you'll hours you'll see but... like you'd, but you don't have to do everything in it and you can kind of complete the main line um, probably in under 30 hours so I okay, think you'll man, love cool. it take it uh, you know you'll enjoy it <laughs> do you know what man I am pretty fucking pleased with that to be honest with you because I'll be honest I am not entirely sure I would have ever really have made time for it yeah but it's a game that I know is beloved and has had all the game awards when it first came out it done exceptionally <laughs> well as a bit of a dark horse and yeah a really really good game it's just something that i turned the corner on and never really getting around to it you yeah. know what i mean so this making me play it i'm actually pretty pleased with that man i'm good, actually good stuff yeah that, so well I, i'm sure you're gonna love it um you just need to persevere with it it's got the, the voice acting now so you don't need to do too much reading so uh, that is good <laughs> yeah. i'm very pleased about that very pleased about that i didn't want another kentucky route zero on our hands where we felt like oh, you were getting about 15 playing again. Kentucky Route Zeros in this game, man. (laughs) All right, Lewis, I think it's time we move on to the announcements at the Game Awards. And we are back for the Game Award announcements, Lewis. Now, there were so many this year, we cannot possibly cover them all. So this will be our highlights list. All the big stuff, not missing out anything important, or at least not important for me and you, (laughs) but we need to get cracking because there is so much here. Oh my God, (laughs) Liz. So first of all, PlayStation announced that Returnal is coming to PC in early 2023 and The Last of Us Part 1 is coming to PC on March the 3rd, 2023, which I think really was the whole point in remaking The Last of Us was basically bring it to PC. PlayStation continuing their March and to put stuff onto PC, we're very interested to see how quickly God of War Ragnarok rock appears on their list <laughs> after that was post trauma this is apparently been around for a little while though i don't personally remember seeing it much before it looks very much like an old school sort of resident evil slash silent hill game lots of fixed camera angles and stuff like that i think it looks pretty interesting and it has a fat protagonist which is awesome <laughs> i think fat people are underrepresented in video games lists and as a fat man myself very glad to see a fat protagonist <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah after that was viewfinder this is a very interesting cool little puzzle game very much gave off the witness vibes we sort of gotta go esque environmental puzzle solving i think i think this looked pretty interesting definitely something to keep your eye on 
Yeah, definitely agree with that. It looked like a really interesting little puzzle game. The kind of thing that will turn up on our play along, no doubt. <laughs> certainly will, certainly will, no doubt about it. After that, we got another Atomic Heart trailer, which I think continues to look pretty great, to be honest mm. with you. I've heard more than one person describe this as being a bit more like Bioshock. I initially thought that it was supposed to be like a more of a Fallout vibe, but either way, I think it looks pretty awesome. It's coming February the 21st next year. It will be on Game Pass. Definitely something to keep your eye out for. After that, list was Scars Above, which got a release date. This game looks staggeringly, staggeringly similar to Returnal, to the point that when this trailer was being shown, me and you both thought that this could be Returnal DLC. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I think it looks pretty good because it looks exactly like Returnal, which looked pretty good. It's coming in February the 25th. It'll be very interesting to see how that game lands. After that was After Us, which got revealed. This is a Private Division published indie game, which kind of has 3D inside vibes about it, I would say, with sort of Grease-esque floaty jumping, basically. It looked pretty cool, I thought. Definitely something to keep your eye on as well, and is coming spring 2023. Then we got a new trailer for Replaced Lewis, which has got a release window of 2023. This is a side-scrolling pixel art game, which I believe we saw earlier in the year at an Xbox showcase of some description. It has very Blade Runner, future noir vibes about it. I think that this looks great, honestly. I definitely want to hear more about this game, and it is something I will be keeping a very close eye on going forward. Yeah, I thought this was a great little show into this. Uh, definitely, again, I think one that we will be diving into together, no doubt. Yeah, almost certainly a play-along game. <laughs> definitely of that calibre, I would say. <laughs> After that, Lewis, was Street Fighter VI, which also got a new trailer. Looks pretty good, as you would expect from Street Fighter. I'm not a massive fan of the new art style, if I'm totally honest with you, and I know that they've got a lot of pushback on that. But I'm sure if you're a Street Fighter fan, this game will be pretty good. I'm sure you got something out of the trailer as well, and it is coming on June the 2nd next year. Next up, Lewis, a huge reveal. The first enormous reveal of the show, in my opinion, Hades Two. Oh my god, when this was revealed, I could not believe it. This is the first major surprise of the show by a mile. The first Hades game was absolutely beloved. It won many an award at the Game Awards when it was eligible. Only this time you seem to be playing as a female protagonist who is apparently the sister of Zagreus from the first game. I think Supergiant are an absolutely outstanding studio. They are arguably one of the best studios working in video games right now, in my opinion. Even though this is another roguelike, and I am not a huge fan of roguelikes, as many of you will know if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, I am still very much interested in this just because it's that studio, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree with your assessment of Supergiant there. Every game that they've put out has been brilliant. Hades, you know, definitely on that top tier of, of games that they've put out. Um, and yeah, and was absolutely critically adored, com I think commercially successful, it seems like. Uh, so as their first sequel, they've obviously recognised the, the support that that first game had and want to kind of capitalise on that. And I think they're right to, because not only was it like all of their games, fantastic to play um, and that you know when you're saying it's a roguelike and that's a bad thing it's actually just a fantastic action game um, <laughs> well it is yeah around the roguelike bits it's a fantastic yeah it's action just game. a great <laughs> game to play so they've seen that and they've went actually we can build on this story that people absolutely adored and the characters and the kind of lore that they put in so i can't wait for this i hope we get it sooner rather than later but i suspect it's probably quite a wee ways off yet I'm sure it is a little bit down the line, but apparently it is coming in early access to PC at some point as well, as the original. Oh yeah, did, absolutely. Which was great. I think. I think that they got a lot of good. They feedback got tons from that. From that apparently, think, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that's a good thing for them. Very excited about this game. Awesome review. Two thumbs up from us. I think. <laughs> yeah, great surprise for Kila to pull out. Definitely. Definitely, man. After that was Judas. This by Ken Levine and Ghost Story Games. Ken Levine was the creator of Bioshock and I think has been working on this game for a very long time because Ghost Story Games has been around for a very long time but it hasn't announced anything. <laughs> it does have a distinctly Bioshock vibe about it in my opinion. Maybe a little bit more sci-fi in nature. Either way, I think that this is definitely something to keep your eye on going forward. I thought it looked great. It was very much up my street. When you say, yeah, say distinctly Bioshock vibe about it, I mean, it definitely just looks like more Bioshock in a lot of ways. Um, <laughs> that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. It's awesome. not a bad thing. I mean, yeah, it's, it'll be interesting to see how he has evolved that formula because, uh, you know, other studios, Arcane in particular, are, are kind of taking the sorts of things that that, that studio was doing back in the day uh, and taking it off in other directions. And so he here comes the big daddy back again. What's he going to bring back to the table, you know? And if it's too much like Bioshock, I think that might count against them. But, you know, you've got 
got to expect this game's been in development for so long as well you've got to expect that something good has been cooking or you've got to hope for that at least certainly was that big daddy a reference to bioshock there was that a deliberate reference? it wasn't no but it's just you know that's just my natural you should have said yes i would have thought you were a hero for that list that would have been incredible <laughs> no unfortunately not <laughs> after that list we got a suicide squad trailer i think that this was mainly just a cinematic which i don't think is great considering the game is apparently coming out on may the 26th but i think that the real purpose of this trailer was to pay tribute to kevin conroy who sadly passed away earlier this year he was the original voice of batman in the arkham games and in the animated series so for people mine and lewis's age he just was batman to us growing up you know what i mean and sadly he passed away this year and it was it was just nice of them to pay tribute and it got like a huge pop when, yeah when his name came up it, it was just a nice yeah, thing so to do i think you know? reconfirming that he is the voice of batman in that game as well i think so that's sure you know, so that'll be his that, last kind of performance, performance obviously performance, posthumously yeah. yeah yeah sad after that list was Star Wars Jedi Survivor. This got a gameplay trailer, and honestly, I thought it looked pretty great. It looked a lot like more Jedi Fallen Order, which I am totally fine with, to be clear. Um, it's got a release date as well of March the 17th next year. I thought it was looking pretty good, Luz. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, this is one that we knew was coming. They'd kind of told us in advance that Jedi Survivor was going to be here. And I, I thought we would just get a cinematic, though. I didn't really expect too much and to see a bit of gameplay. You're right, it does look like the last game still, but it maybe tightened up a bit more. Uh, you know, it looked like pretty fast-paced action like we expect from the previous game as well. So, yeah, I hope they just evolve that series. I hope what they don't do is do the classic sort of PS2 era gritty sequel where they, you know thinking back to like prince of persia and how this <laughs> sequels of those games were sure, always just like yeah, yeah, yeah. darker and darker <laughs> you know we don't necessarily need that but you know a bit of grit in the star wars universe is never a bad thing because it can be a little bit sort of saccharine and sweet at times so and coming really soon man <laughs> it's pretty much a birthday game for old lewis here sure. so uh, very uh, close yeah, to lewis's birthday yeah <laughs> I, I hope to pick that up pretty early on because i really enjoyed the first game and i'm more of a Soulsborne player since then so yeah definitely i think this is definitely like Soulsborne light but i I mean, definitely yeah, totally, along yeah. those lines. You can definitely see that DNA there. Really, really great game. I really like the first game as well, to be honest with you, man. I'm really excited about this. After that, Lewis, was Earthblade. This by Extremely OK Games, who made Celeste, which is, I would argue, one of the best indie games ever made and a personal favourite of both mine and Lewis's. They previously released a quote-unquote vibe trailer for this game, which basically just announced that they were working on something. However, this trailer looked much more like Hollow Knight rather than Celeste. And if these guys are making a uh, metroidvania game list i would be so ecstatically happy i would be very very pleased indeed they say that this game is coming in 2024 but i think like hollow knight silk song it will just be coming when it's ready if it doesn't hit 2024 i wouldn't be stunned by that at the same time don't really care would rather it just come out when it was ready and it absolutely smashed it yeah i absolutely agree with that it doesn't need to be brought out anytime soon if it, if it can be perfected yeah really excited by this that vibe trailer wasn't doing tons for me and i worried that we might not get something as great as celeste but this little i mean it's still a really short reveal we didn't really get to see a great deal of what the game actually will be just the kind of map almost a pan across the map you did see the wee guy like like fighting and stuff like that as well so there's obviously combat in this yeah well that was the thing like that celeste you know what i mean and there's like enemies and whatever you know exactly that was the main reveal to get basically was that it's not just because there was a lot of kind of hollow knight-esque sections in celeste and you know or vice versa um and so it'll be interesting to now see how extremely okay games move into that kind of combat realm i hope it just it doesn't feel like exactly like hollow knight i mean that would be great in its way but i'm sure it won't man i'm sure yeah won't. like maybe It'll if it leans more into the platform and say that would be great yeah man very very up for that that again was a sort of huge reveal when i saw extremely okay games logo come up i was like holy shit this is awesome <laughs> couldn't really believe that fantastic announcement was really into that after that was for spoken which got another trailer and the announcement that there would be a playstation 5 demo i'm very very keen to play this demo i started off being pretty excited about this game but then every time i've seen it since i've got a little bit less excited to be honest with you it's coming on january the 24th next year so not far away at all i'm keen to play the trailer i hope it vibes with me and i hope i can get excited about that game again you know yeah i definitely meant to play that demo it's we had a wee bit of a mixed response but i'm definitely gonna check it out myself I would say mixed response is <laughs> kind. Yes. <laughs> After that list, though, another enormous announcement. Death Stranding 2. Unbelievable. I could not believe that this got announced. We all knew that Kojima was going to be there because it's Jeff Keighley and, of course, he was going to be there. But I wasn't expecting this announcement. 
as with every Death Stranding trailer I think we've ever seen, it was basically incomprehensible and was very difficult to work out what was going on. But it seemed as though the focus might have moved to Fragile, the character Fragile from the original games, rather than on Norman Reeves' character. Lewis, what are your thoughts here? Oh, just absolutely stunned and delighted, first of all. Uh, I, I mean, I, I wasn't totally surprised that we got a Death Stranding 2 eventually. I wasn't necessarily expecting that to be the Kojima reveal that we kind of knew we were going to get at the Game Awards. But yeah, it looks absolutely brilliant to me. I, I can't wait to see where this is going to go next. Yeah, I wasn't sure if we were going to continue going with Sam Bridges or, or how they would even go about that. I, I agree with you. It looks to me like Fragile is the kind of heart of the game. I think she says to him at one point in that trailer, like, meet my crew as that big kind of hovercraft thing comes out of the water yeah um, that again was completely incomprehensible of yeah, course you like use my crew and then a big enormous ship appeared it's like what <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so but i mean i guess we know that she had her own kind of delivery service thing going on at the same time as what we were doing and to be honest for a lot of that trailer i thought it was maybe going to be a prequel almost like what was going on with fragile before sam oh, ran into yeah, 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 sure. particularly when yeah, we yeah. kind of saw a lot of like a, there was a baby you know that she was seemed to be kind of looking after at the start before we even saw the kind of yellow tank thing again so but it, then we saw some bridges and he's obviously older and so we're, we seem to be after Death Stranding what will you connect and now I love that question that the trailer posed at the end which was essentially should we have connected and like if that's the the way that the game goes now is to be like we made this internet essentially and it's not turned out so great all the time <laughs> like what's coming for, for Sam and the gang I can't wait man I'm really really excited I'm glad you are, man. Like, obviously, you had a better time with Death Stranding than I did. Although, to be clear, like, I very yeah, much liked, liked Death it, Stranding. Yeah, yeah. Thoroughly enjoyed playing it. It wasn't vibing with me in the way it was vibing with you. I'll just say that much. But also very, very excited. Interesting to see if the shift to Fragile, what that means, what they're now going to be exploring with us. All very, very interesting. Cannot wait to see more trailers that will only confuse the fuck out of me. <laughs> It'll be a whole other thing again, I'm sure. <laughs> But after that, Lewis, it's almost as if this section was made for you because we got to see more Tekken 8 and it was an absolutely awesome trailer, I've got to say. It looks as though we're potentially going to get to play as Devil Kazuya and Jun Kazama from the previous games. Still no release date yet, unfortunately, but I'm going to shut up for a little while while I'm sure Lewis <laughs> tells you why this is the greatest thing that's ever happened. <laughs> um, I mean, I thought this was a brilliant, brilliant trailer. I cannot wait for this game, obviously. We, we spoke about it at length when the, we got the first teaser. I mean, I don't think we saw a great deal more here, to be honest. A little bit of gameplay or kind of in-engine battles, which was great to see. My boy King turned up again. Good to see. <laughs> Just of little, course he turns up. He's like the mascot. I know, basically. but making sure he's in the trailers, you know. You've got to make sure he's, he's front and centre. No, I thought this was great. I think that this point about the Kazuya and June is an interesting one because I can kind of see why people are jumping to that but at the same time they haven't really given us any I mean June has turned up in other games and, and kind of flashbacks and memories and it, it did cross my mind that, that we tie in well with the anime that they put out earlier this year like that felt very much like reinforcing the June aspect of Jin's story because obviously the games have moved on quite a bit from that and you don't get a lot of references within Jin's story to kind of what set him off on that journey um, but this feels like it's heading towards this big conclusion of the Mishima storyline you know if Kazuya did beat Heiachi at the end of the last game then we are kind of here for the battle royale I suspect this is going to be Jin's redemption and that will be a really kind of fascinating arc to go down for what might be the last game in the series probably not but the last game that's kind of following this arc somehow don't really see how they're going to move away from it but <laughs> there you go <laughs> no me neither not a clue but yeah allegedly the Mishima storyline within Tekken and if no one knows what the hell we're talking about go back and play all the Tekken games and then you'll <laughs> play every one of them then it'll, then it'll be as clear as mud I'm sure to you <laughs> But yeah, the, apparently the Mishima storyline is sort of coming to an end. It'll be very interesting how they wrap that up. Very interesting to see how they move on from that, if they move on from that. But yeah, apparently Heiachi is dead, but I suspect, knowing Tekken, he's not. Yeah. <laughs> After that, Lewis, was Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores DLC. This, again, was a little bit of a surprise. I wasn't expecting Forbidden West DLC, like, this soon. I don't know, it feels soon, although technically this will be over a year after the original game came out, but we only got a little bit of a cinematic here. I thought it looked cool. It's coming on April the 19th. If you want to play more Horizon Forbidden West, you'll very soon be able to. And if it's anything like the previous DLC for Zero Dawn, it will be very, very good indeed. 
After that list, we got Remnant 2, which is a sequel to 2019's Remnant from the Ashes, which is a Souls-like game, but with guns. And I actually think it was relatively well received in the Souls community. No date on this one yet, but something to keep your eye on, and I'm sure we'll be getting more information on it on the months moving forward. Then after that, we got Banishers Ghosts of New Eden, which is a new action RPG by Don't Nod of Life is Strange fame. Now, I strongly suspect that this game will be absolutely nothing like Life is Strange for anyone worried about that. I think that it will be much closer to their previous attempt at an action game, which was Vampire or Vampire. I'm not really entirely sure how we're supposed to be saying that, which I think looks much more interesting than that game. I think this looks much more interesting. And Vampire or Vampire wasn't massively well received and i hope that this does better for them because i really do like don't nod as a studio currently has a release date of the end of 2023 wouldn't be surprised at all if it missed that but that's absolutely fine one that piqued my interest list i'll say that much yeah definitely good to see don't nod heading off in other directions it oddly gave me a sort of witcher vibe in the sense that there was a lot of kind of side quests in the witcher where you would just go and kind of meet ghosts or weird spirits or just villagers and then kind of sort out their problems for them and it just that little bit of gameplay we saw kind of reminded me of that and just the kind of tone of it all felt similar to that so i could see them being being a bit of a kind of you know an action rpg with some of don't nod's kind of classic dialogue choices and kind of story decisions which sure, would be sure, a little yeah. sort of interesting spin on that genre yeah definitely i think that makes a lot of sense definitely one that caught my eye again i like don't nod as a studio so i'll definitely be following that After that list, we got Crash Team Rumble, which is a 4v4 arena action game featuring all the Crash Bandicoot characters. From what I can work out, it seems to basically be a a third-person shooter, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm not 100% sure if it's Maybe just like that or Maybe like a Splatoon tasks. type thing or something or yeah, like a yeah, Knockout I'm not City. Entirely or, sure. yeah. Not entirely sure what it's quirky mechanic is, let's say. I'm not even sure if there is one. I'm not even sure if there's just multiple modes to it. No idea. I'm not sure the world needed this game if I'm completely honest with you, Liz, but it is apparently coming in 2023. And if you're clamoring to play a Crash Bandicoot based arena shooter, <laughs> you soon will be able to. After that list was Crime Boss Rocky City, which is an absolutely bizarre game so far as I can work out. It looks like an early GTA clone in in the sort of Saints Row vibe, only it's a first person shooter. But it stars Danny Glover, Danny Trejo, Michael Rooker, Vanilla Ice and Chuck Norris. It is absolutely insane. I don't really know what to make of this. I will be honest, the trailer wasn't doing a hell of a lot for me, but I can see why it would be vibing with, again, people that were into like Saints Row and stuff like that. It's slated to come out March the 28th, 2023. Lewis, what are your thoughts? completely bizarre as you say this game was also presented very strangely at the show itself with like where was it michael madsen came out with like two kind of fake bodyguards and they were all telling us like the boss is talking and it felt very like tonally weird with the whole show the whole thing to me smacks of like a publisher or a producer behind this that has a lot of money because to gather that cast together i'm not actually sure who is publishing it but to gather that cast together to put together a slot like that in a show like this that had the kind of reveals that it has had <laughs> uh feels to me like someone betting big that this will shift some units but doesn't look any use to me particularly uh, no yeah it feels like an older thing altogether It really does, and it feels like... Well, I don't want to jinx the game, but it feels like they might have spaffed a lot of their budget on getting those names in to read lines when what they should have taken was all of that budget and made a good game with it and i'm yeah. not entirely sure that they've done that yeah but i mean fingers crossed look th- this could be great i think it's early days for it but mm, yeah wasn't doing a huge amount for me Lewis, i've got to say no exactly after that list though another big announcement armor core six fire of rubicon we did get a big announcement from FromSoft list. It just wasn't Elden Ring DLC. So far as I can work out, this game is supposed to be like a bit of a soft reboot for the series. And frankly, I think the series needs it. Assuming that this game releases in its 2023 window, that will be 11 years since the last Armor Core game. And I know that this series has got a bit of a cult following and that is largely off of the back of the Soulsborne games and their immense success and the way that they've shaped the video games industry. But these games never really reviewed that well. They were never really received that well by and large and they were never particularly successful. And they have already said that this game isn't going to be a Souls game and that it isn't going to be directed by Miyazaki. Like, 
I don't know. This isn't doing a lot for me. Like, I would much rather that FromSoft made another Souls-like game rather than make this, to be completely honest. But I, I don't know. Like, I feel as if it's set up a little bit to be disappointing to me, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, I can see why you would say that. I think ultimately, you could, particularly if it's not a Souls game, I think that this will disappoint people who don't look into it, you know, and just see the From name and assume it's going to be a Souls game and then pick it up, you know. But it does have that cult following. I think the, you know, the older games, because this series has been around for a a, a while, um, you know, a lot of iterations, those games, I think, also had a fan base. And so if it's something that pays tribute to that, but maybe updates it, then it will have its supporters. But yeah, I think if, if the idea is that people will put down Elden Ring and pick this up, that's probably a mistake from what we know about the series, um, and unless they announce something crazy about this. But I don't know, it could be, like, it'd be interesting just to see how they flex their muscles on other things. They have they made a couple of like quite small games in between all the Souls stuff, just, you know, there must be... They did, they made that, uh, I think, I don't know if it was PSVR, but it was definitely a VR game that was sort of like a horror-esque thing as well. I remember that came yeah, out Yeah, between... but it looked like a really small thing. It had like a weird French name that I can't remember now. Um, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right, yeah. But, uh, so, you know, they, they they obviously have kind of teams within teams and maybe this is just a bit of a passion project if it's something that, you know, they've worked on for historically. It would have been great if this was just like a mech Souls game, though. I think that would have been really cool. Yeah, I know, that would have been really cool. <laughs> See, if they went like that, it's now a Souls game and it's now Armour Core, but we've made it any Souls, I would have been like, yes, yeah. now we're fucking talking. But, yeah, because all yeah, that mech stuff not. never really clicks with me in gaming either like i just don't, there's too much happening on screen there's too much just flying about you don't know what's happening it's not for me generally yeah i mean look if anyone can do it from soft can do it totally, like if anyone can totally. turn me on to this they can turn me on to it right I, i'm not ruling it out in any capacity it's just not really what i want i know that people have been clamoring for a new armor core game for forever and fair play to you, you've got it and i hope that you're happy with it when it comes out but yeah this isn't what i wanted from that studio and just to say, I think that the guy who was the lead game designer or something like that on Sekiro is the guy who's directing this. So it's not as if it's That's in bad hands, to be clear. Yeah. Like, it's not, <laughs> it's, like it's not as if it's some guy off the street who they've got in to direct it, but it's not Miyazaki, it is someone else, which in and of itself is quite interesting. And Lewis, they ended the show with a new trailer for Final Fantasy 16. And honestly, I think that this continues to look quite good. I am not the Final Fantasy fan I once was, and frankly, the game has long been on a road that I am not massively interested in, if I'm completely honest. I would love to see them bring some of that awesome sort of dual combat from Final Fantasy 7 Remake, the sort of DMC-style action combat and the menu-driven stuff. That collaboration of those two things i just thought was done so so well however it does look as if they are sticking to the dmc style stuff for the main series which is a bit of a shame in my eyes but the biggest part of this announcement was that there was confirmation of a release date of june the 22nd 2023 which is not far away at all so i think a lot of people will be excited about that wouldn't be surprised if that's pushed if i'm totally honest but again i think that the game looks great for what it is yeah, I mean, this was a great kind of final flourish. It's a shame because it just doesn't do anything for me. I think I said this when the first the first time we were showing it, it just completely sails over my head. I can barely tell you what was going on in that trailer, you know. And that's not that's you know that's just about me and my taste and how it clicks with that. I just don't get excited about this. Um, neither the kind of story side of it, or you know, the setting, nor the you know the combat as you were talking about how it's. It's interesting to me that they haven't stuck with the FF7 system, given that it was very well received altogether. But you know, they must have a vision for the game, or maybe that's the kind of thing that they'll just reveal nearer the time how all that works, and there'll, there'll be a bit more depth to it. So yeah, I don't want to. I feel bad for kind of putting a dampener on the last game that gets shown because I don't think it looked bad or anything at all. It just doesn't really click with me. So I think for someone like you who has been a fan has dropped away from it, but to think that it still looks kind of interesting at least i mean do you yeah, think you yeah, would I ever do. play it or is it you know it would need to come out and impress you i suppose i mean yeah a little bit i suppose i think i just prefer final fantasy when it isn't in a high fantasy setting which i know is sacrilege mm. to a lot of people because that's where the series got its name and yeah. where it where, where it begun but like i entered the series in final fantasy 7 which was a total left turn for it you know what i mean like at the time it was it was groundbreaking for that for that series at the time well the first six but all high fantasy one, pretty, pretty much, much I mean, yeah i didn't, I didn't yeah, really know that basically think, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, it probably would have to impress me a little bit, but I mean, at the same time, like, I'm enjoying playing Bayonetta 3 right now, do you know what I mean? Mm, so gameplay-wise... So gameplay-wise, 
it's not, I mean, it's in the same realm as that. So I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I just need to get over the fact that it's not the Final Fantasy that I want it to be, but I can still enjoy what it is now. Do you know what I mean? And maybe I've just sort of <laughs> resented it for a little while for not being the Final Fantasy I want it to be. Sure. And being this same sort of action style as like DMC and like the Bayonetta games and whatever. And not that there's anything wrong with that. That's just not what I wanted from Final Fantasy. But there's no reason I can't enjoy that. You yeah, know? absolutely. And also, you know, the series went off into all the online stuff and all that as well. I mean, it's become Become so many things really final fantasy now so sure well yeah. it was basically 11 well 11 was the first foyer into being online and that was a total car crash and then they had uh, 12 and 13 which were a bit sort of eh. and then it went into 14 which initially when that came out was a total car crash i know that's now since remarkably yeah. turned the corner there then we had 15 which was supposed to be quite good and there's a lot of me that wants to go back and play 15 but yeah maybe maybe it will be 16 that then gets me back into the series proper yeah i'm willing to give it a chance i'm, I'm open to liking this game that is where i'll i'll leave it there <laughs> <laughs> a nice healthy positive note <laughs> thanks man <laughs> Lewis, the show on a whole, I thought it was pretty great, to be honest with you. This felt like an E3 banger show. Do you know what I mean? This felt like great announcement after great announcement and interwoven with these awards that, frankly, on the night, despite the fact that it's called the Game Awards, take a backseat to all the Yeah, things, absolutely. In my yeah. opinion, anyway. Like, like, this was the exciting bit, like, seeing all this stuff. And I thought that they... I thought that they'd done pretty damn well here. Like, they had big, huge AAA stuff. They had indie stuff. They had everything in between. There was a lot to get excited about. I don't know if it was just playing to my taste, but I thought it was a good show. No, I think it was fantastic, to be honest. One of the best shows like this we've seen in a good wee while, I think. Certainly in terms of the level of the announcements that we got. I mean even working out the what we were going to include in the show i mean we're, we had to cut things that i think in plenty of other shows would have got a bit of airtime because you know you think back to things like the um summer games fest and stuff like that there was just nothing you know remember at summer game fest we were talking about how they were just all uh spooky space horror games essentially <laughs> yeah there was like, so many space horror games yeah, that's like, right yeah yeah and you kind of came out and you're like oh yeah there was one or two things and you're trying to kind of find reasons to talk about certain games this time it was just banger after banger after banger and we watched most of the show live together even sure. though it's quite yeah, late yeah. in uk time and you know i went in with pretty low expectations and you know even from the pre-show you're going all right okay we're getting returnal and we're getting this and that yeah plenty of things even there and then when the main show started you know to get that run of like death strand and tekken 8 horizon dlc to get from soft stuff and then all of that interspersed with the awards which you know definitely did take a backseat always does and that will be a perennial criticism of the show but people i don't believe would be watching it if they didn't pack it with this stuff anyway so you know you still get the attention on on the devs on the night so uh it's kind of when when some odd awkward moments christopher judge should have been taken off the stage <laughs> so much faster <laughs> yeah that you need that big stick like from the cartoons to, exactly like, yeah and weak him off the stage <laughs> <laughs> so, no he was he was great i mean he went on he went he did go on for a long time but he was he was good he, he was a good dude i yeah. quite like him <laughs> took his moment exactly yeah it's hard to figure out they seem, still seem to get through everything else uh al pacino was an odd vibe there was a, just oh, a lot god of, i forgot about al pacino yeah Jesus. there was a lot of then odd there was moments. the guy who walked on his stage at the end for the game of the year award with for Elden Ring that was insane completely as well. bizarre arrested. <laughs> fairly <laughs> mad security nonsense. risk but yeah overall I mean yeah a good celebration I and mean, looking at with those games that we've ran through there I think the majority of the show featured games or certainly most games that had dates in them are slated for 2023 and we're, so we're looking at a really healthy year next year I think obviously most of that will not occur <laughs> most of them probably will slide <laughs> but you know if you get a fraction of what we were showing uh, you know last week I think a lot of it was early doors as well like there was a lot coming in February a lot coming in March yep. like obvi- obviously trying to hit, hit the end of the financial year and I'm sure they won't all make it either but they're telling their investors they will right now anyway <laughs> so I, I, like I think that a lot of people are trying to hit that early window in, in 2023 and to be honest with you if half of these games come out when they say that they're going to it's going to be a good year man it's going to be a great year and on top of that like it looks as if well it looks as if we might be getting a quiet year from PlayStation and a more up year from Xbox not that they could be much quieter than they were this year well, they didn't but, like, actually show Starfield anything at this either like so they, they, they but, didn't but, but I'm just saying of, like they've sort of said that there's more to come from them soon which is great too you know sure but like I was more just getting into like like Starfield yeah, yeah. Out and all that do you know what I mean like they're just going to have a bigger slate next year so I think 2023 is shaping up to be pretty good, particularly off the back of a lot of these announcements and getting a lot of dates confirmed and whatever. I, I thought it was pretty good. Lewis, the Game Awards in general, do you think we need it? Do you enjoy this? Do you enjoy watching these this stuff? Do you think that they're 
as a place for this. <laughs> uh, absolutely. I mean, I, I get the criticism that these shows draw. I get the criticism that all awards shows draw from from it. You know, the Oscars and and those kinds of things in particular. They're they're sort of absurd in their way. They're never fair. They're never really totally reflective of everything. Uh, they all have their biases and their skews, and and the Game Awards is no different to that. But it's you know, as I said a few weeks ago, it's a it's a chance to celebrate the industry. It's not perfect, but we can clap every nominee and every game that didn't get nominated that we think should have done and you know everyone can kind of just take that moment to reflect on the industry and on the year that's been and then to throw in on top of that some really amazing looking stuff for the year ahead i mean i do i think that is a problem but it's not a problem that the game awards itself has anything to do with really that i don't think people would pay attention to these awards if they didn't have trailers like this if it didn't feel like an e3 show but that's that's us that's the viewers right that's on the on the consumer side of everything so um i'm not sure keely gets totally fair criticism for that all the time no, I mean, I basically agree with everything you're saying there. Like, I, I think that we should see this as a industry-wide moment to celebrate video games, and that's why I think it should be billed as, like, if you enjoy the game way better this year than Elden Ring and God of War combined, like, that is a completely valid opinion. Like, that, none of this invalidates the fact that you enjoy the games better than Elden Ring and God of War. If you didn't think those games even deserve to be nominated, that's totally fine. This is totally valid. Like, this is a very specific subset of the gaming industry's opinion on what these awards are and that's that's fine do you know what i mean but like don't let it invalidate how much fun you had with other games or whatever like and also just don't get mad that elden ring won like a lot of people loved elden ring but if you didn't that's that's fine like it wasn't my favorite game of the year either do you know what i mean it's it's all good (laughs) uh yeah i don't know like i think people just get themselves like very wound up about a lot of this stuff and it's just like can we not just have the fun bits of it though like can we not just have like the big celebrations and all the announcements and stuff like that because that is the best bit and that is is why a lot of people are probably tuning in and like these award things happen and it's nice and it's good to celebrate games and whatever maybe it'd be nice if we could celebrate a slightly bigger spectrum of video games but maybe that's another discussion (laughs) but yeah like just just enjoy it for what it is it's it's a fun time it's, it's it's a time to reflect on the year and gaming and it's a time to celebrate video games they don't come along particularly often particularly on this scale so yeah man just enjoy it just have a good time like people get so angry about all of this stuff and it's just like chill out man like it's all good it's all good it's just video games video games are awesome well chill that's out. the thing yeah i mean in the, this show in particular i think you get plenty of these shows and just showcases even from the individual publishers and stuff where you, you can easily leave it and be like there was nothing there for me and if you've left a show like this thinking that then you know, there's a pretty wide range of stuff being covered here, and that's not to say that you're that there's not a place or that you won't find games. But I think to criticise this particular show as well, given that it sort of delivered across the board surprises, things we knew were coming, but they looked great. You know, yeah, and it is looking like a really exciting year ahead. Hopefully, as many things as possible hit their dates, and we this time next year we're talking about some not 50 50 game of the year categories and some more you know five way and actually this other game should definitely have been nominated but was robbed kind of yeah, conversations man. no definitely yeah I, I want to be spoiled for choice greedy and spoiled for choice that's what i want for next year <laughs> <laughs> all right ladies and gentlemen i think we will have to call it a date there i'd like to remind everyone that you can find players too on all the social media that is facebook twitter youtube instagram the lot you can also find our written content over at players2.com. That's P L A Y E R S T O O com. And if you could take five seconds to give us five stars over on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts, that really, really, really helps us out. It does a huge amount for the exposure of the show. And while you're over there, if you could leave us a little review as well, again, that just helps us out even more. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much to anyone that's already done that for us. You're an absolute legend to us. I'd like to remind everyone that our play along game for this month is actually Observation and I am aware that we've not done Stories Untold yet, that is entirely my fault for being off, we're going to do that next week but our play along game for this month is actually Observation, so we'll be talking about Untold Stories next week and we'll be playing Observation this month and we'll be talking about that in the new year it's all my fault, I apologise that this is so late, (laughs) but it will be happening next year, me and Lewis have both played it, I think we're both pretty keen to talk about it as well Local boys from Glasgow, very keen to speak about this. Try not to give too much away, but it was a good game. It was good. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, well, yeah, we've not actually spoken about it at all off air even. So, uh, yeah, I can't wait to have that discussion and need to actually get moving with Observation, which I think might be on PS Plus now. I need to go and double check that. But yeah, um, if oh, you're, cool. yeah, you're yeah. going to play along with us, check out your options because it's definitely been on Game Pass before as well, if it isn't now. So Yeah, it was definitely given away on PlayStation as well because I own it, but I'm pretty sure I didn't buy it. Or maybe, so it's, maybe, maybe it's that. I think it was 
of at then, some point yeah. as well. But, but yeah, yeah, great game. I, I would seriously consider on buying this again if it turned out to be good to just to support the devs, just because Absolutely. they are very local to where we are literally sat right now. <laughs> yeah, very awesome. Very excited to play these games. Definitely want to talk about them. I'm sorry it's taken so long. But ladies and gentlemen, we will see you next week. Thanks. Thanks.